Welcome. The following technical support video will show you how to use the white ink layer in multi-rip GP direct to garment rip software. You first want to start off with whatever your graphic is. I recommend you put your graphic in a template or blank piece of paper in your graphic software at the same size that you're printing to your plat. In this case our platen is going to be 12 and a half by 16. We'll go up to image come down to image size and you notice that our width is 12 and a half, our height is 16 and the resolution is 200 dpi. I don't recommend anything higher than 200 dpi because for the most part fabrics cannot hold anything of a higher resolution and you'll just waste ink. So once you have your graphics set up into the right size you will then turn around and check the mode of the graphic. When you're printing white ink, it really doesn't make that big of a deal whether you're printing RGB or CMYK because it's only one color white. If it was a, another one where we put color ink on it, I'd recommend switching it to RGB. Not that big of a deal right now. Even can make it grayscale if you wanted to. So once we have that done, we'll go to the file, click on file, and go down to print the print menu will open up. You want to choose the MRGP with white ink depending on which printer you have. This one's set up for the Anajet printer. Click on properties and then go down to advanced. You're now into the RIP settings. First thing you want to look at is your paper size, your platen size. We're going to do the 12 and a half by 16 so we'll have that one set. You can look at your print quality. That is really your resolution. You can choose fine or super fine. Fine is 1440 by 720 and super fine is 1440 by 1440. In this case we'll just run with fine. I'm going to run with fine on the print quality but as I scroll down I will choose the color appearance. I'm going to choose vivid darker. Since it's just text it's basically just like a vector graphic. If we use the vi vivid darker it'll just drop a little bit more ink down. Give us a little better coverage. I wouldn't recommend using Vivid Darker when you're using a photograph or a rastered graphic. It's truly based just for text or vector graphics. For the color layer type, since all we're doing is printing white ink, we're going to come down and choose the white ink layer. Now you'll notice that there are two yellow triangles with exclamation points that pop up. These are telling us that our settings are not matching up. We'll address those as we go down a little bit farther. For the color passes, you don't have to worry about anything in that because all we're doing is printing white ink. And the white ink, you can choose if you want to drop more than one pass of white ink onto this shirt. I don't recommend this as the R1800 printer, the one we're using right now, uh, can drop plenty enough white ink. And actually, if you go with multiple passes, we'll probably puddle the white ink. So go ahead and keep that on one. For the RGB and CMYK source profiles, it really does not make a difference since we're just printing white ink. So you can go ahead and ignore that. Now we'll come down to media type. We're obviously not going to drop white ink onto white cotton. So we'll come down here and choose one of our darker substrates. In this case, we'll choose black cotton. You can come down to print direction and choose whether you want to go bi-directional or unidirectional. Because our graphic had some fine lines and text in it, I'd recommend going unidirectional. Most of the time, if you're just printing graphics bidirectional, it'll do a good job for you. Unidirectional tends to work when you have fine lines and text and things like that. For the white ink density, that's going to come down to the type of shirt that you're putting down. You, If you're running a bamboo or very, very light organic fiber shirt, I would choose light density. Medium density tends to be what everybody uses for the majority of the t-shirts and heavy density is for what you would use for sweatshirts. Go ahead and choose medium density in this case. The black ink and underbase behavior and the auto white highlight um, do not apply when you're using the white ink layer. Once you've done that, go ahead and hit OK, OK, and OK. Once you go ahead and send the job to the printer, the multi-rip interface window will open up and going across the top you'll see the file actually get loaded into the RIP as it's doing currently right now. It'll begin the process and rasterize the job for you. Some of the key things to look at when you're in here. You definitely want to check towards the bottom and make sure that there's no error messages or anything else down here. 
if you come over to the incoming jobs tab you'll see our job which is listed as entitled one is right here it's being processed it is quite a large size file it's at 43.45 megabytes um, once it begins the white ink layer site if you come to the pages of printers tab you'll notice that it says that it's spooling what it is doing is actually once it starts to get information it will send it to your printer so that way you can begin to print earlier than having to wait until everything has been sent from the rip to the printer. This will help improve your production time. Once it comes through the pages of the printer or goes and processes through the rip, it will show up in the Process Jobs tab. In the Process Jobs tab, it gives us the ability to preview it. However, with the white ink layer, the preview is going to look a little bit different compared to the preview on the pages to printers tab. So we'll give it a couple more seconds before it actually gets entirely processed through the RIP and it will show up in the process jobs tab. Now the job showed up in the process jobs tab. You come over, click, double click onto the file name and it will open up a window. The window is currently blank because we haven't chose which page you want to look at. Click on the number one and you'll see the page here. Now you remember we're printing white ink onto a shirt, but the background on this is actually white. So the rip goes ahead and makes it black so that way you can see it. This will be a little bit different than what you'll see in the Pages to Printers tab. If you double click on the file name in the Pages to Printer tab, it'll show up with a gray background and with white lettering on it. That's really all it is to printing using the white ink layer. If you like more information or this information in a printable document, please visit www.multiripusers.com. Thank you.